Welcome to the Equip Our Church podcast, a podcast of Infinity Church. Our goal is to serve our church family by engaging in conversations about the Christian life. My name is Nathan Nile, and I'm here with Philip Long. We serve as pastors of Infinity. We hope this can equip and encourage you in your walk with the Lord and your engagement with the church. Well, hey, Philip. Welcome back, buddy. Yeah, we're back again talking about spiritual gifts. So we have talked about the biblical foundations of spiritual gifts. We've talked about discovering your gifts. So let's bring it home today and let's talk about um, how to develop your gifts. So um, someone say they were listening to the past two podcasts. Yeah. They've, they've put into practice what we've talked about of, of prayer, living in community, um, serving to try to discover their gifts. Um, and it leads them to this question where they think they might know what their giftings are. Um, but are those gifts that they discover, are they fully developed immediately when they get them, immediately when they discover them? Are they like the best hmm. they could possibly right. be at that? So right. does okay. that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we mean that a little bit like, of course they're not right. Like, you know, <laughs> of course, of course there's no way you're gifting. If you, if well, like one of the gifts and. Um, Romans 12 is around leadership. Like, okay, well, nobody the first time they try to lead somebody, uh, lead a group of people, is going to be excellent at it. That's going to take time yeah. to develop. And so that, and that's what um, Sunday out of, the, or now it's been a few weeks ago, um, Second, Second Timothy, uh, when Paul is writing this letter to Timothy, he tells him to fan into flame the gift of God. And really that's, that's what I'm getting at with this idea of develop. It's, it's, okay, the gifting is there. Yeah. You know what your gift is. Great. Okay, how do you fan it into flame? What does it look like to take something that's a real small spark, you know, like you said, somebody's maybe been taking some time discerning this, praying this, discovering your gifts in community. It's a spark. The spark is there. How does it go from that spark to a flame? Yeah. How does it go from just a little bit to on fire for the Lord? And um, that that's... That's what we're trying to get at. We're trying to, okay, how, how do you do that? So um, as you and I were just talking, we, we connected it to uh, the process of sanctification. That doesn't happen overnight. Right. When you become a Christian, you are immediately considered righteous in God's eyes by, by justification. He declares you just in God's, God's eyes. But our holiness, personal holiness, has just begun to grow, and God grows us in that process over time. Yeah. And so similarly, uh, so or, or just to kind of ground that a little bit, um, you know, we talk about like from 2 Corinthians 3, 18, uh, it says, We all with unveiled face beholding the glory of God are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So that transformation over time from one degree of glory to another, that's the process of becoming more and more like Christ, more and more in his image, reflecting his image. Um, and I think similarly, when we fan our gifts into flame, they're growing over time. Yeah. Um, so all, all that's what we're getting at. Yeah. We, this I, is going to take some time. I think of um, my wife, Sarah, when she was in uh, veterinary school. Yeah. Um, the process of, like you talked about, getting the gift and developing the gift. I think of uh, picture Sarah in her very first day right. of vet school. She was considered a vet student. Yeah. Fast forward to her last few months after four years of vet school. She is still a student, but she's developed over time. She is working in a vet yeah. office. Yeah. Put those two Sarahs together in a room, and they're both vet students. Yeah. Which one do you think will be able to help diagnose and perform different um, right. Whatever's needed, like yeah. care for, I don't even know veterinary, terms, <laughs> yes. like perform yeah. care for your animal. Right. Probably the fourth year student, right. even though they're both students, yeah. one has been developed more. Yeah. So, and we might, by analogy, we might say both, both versions of Sarah have the same gifting. Yeah. Her academic ability, her science brain, her, her, st- her ability to be a good student is the same one year and four years yeah. later, but that gift has been developed over yeah, time. Yeah, I yeah. would say the ad- identity stays the same. Yes. But the development has increased over yeah. time. Like yeah. you're still th- this is still my gift. Yeah. It's just been developed over time. Yeah. And maybe yeah. just to just to further that analogy, I mean how much she's she grew over those four years and now she's in a residency. I mean, picture Sarah thirty years from now, if she stays in 
veterinary dermatology for 30 years, how much that gift will develop yeah. over that time as she continues to hone that craft. Yeah. And that's that, I think, by analogy, is what we're talking about with spiritual gifts to say, okay, if, you're, if your gift is in leadership, uh, you know what? I mean, like, so I went with um, my daughter's fourth grade class to <laughs> Barrier Island, and one of the things they did was um, they had these little kind of team building things. It was by the kids that are in their class. So they know these kids. You know, this is this. I think this you know, trip was you know, mid April. So they knew um, uh, they knew they've been they've been known these kids since last August. But they they were put in situations where somebody's got to lead. You know, somebody's got to take charge. Yeah. And so I'm watching these nine and ten year olds like discerning and kind of not not obviously not thinking about this, but like, OK, who's the leader of our class? Like, yeah. who, who can lead and who can make wide des- wise decisions? And there were some kids who were very loud who were very bad leaders. Yes, <laughs> you know? exactly. And the kids figured that out. And they and they didn't say that, but they just said, oh, let's go a different direction. You know, yeah. and somebody else speaks up and they're like, okay, that let's follow that plan. Yeah. And so they're kind of finding this gifting in leadership. But take any fourth grader and put them in charge of a company, <laughs> the, you know, to be a CEO or to to you know be an elder of this church. Okay, they're not gonna be good at that. That that gift hasn't developed. The, yeah. the gift is there. What does it look like to fan that into flame? Yeah. So um, I think, like you were pointing out a minute ago, similar to discovery, developing happens as we practice it. Yeah. You know, so there's going to take time. Get your reps. Take your time. You know, I, I had a preaching professor who said, really, it's going to be like four or five hundred sermons before you really find your own voice. That's good. You know, it takes time to figure out, you know, who you are, how you do this, that kind of thing. Um, but that practice can't just be. Um, you know, kind of random or whatever, it's got to be deliberate yeah. and it's got to be intentional yeah. and it's got to have some feedback, you know? So, you know, if somebody is, is practicing free throws in basketball and they're not paying attention to their form, you know, their elbow, instead of being tucked under the ball is, 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 is out wide like a chicken wing. Yeah. You know, you can do that a million times and practice poorly and you're still going to be a bad free throw shooter because your form was terrible. Yeah. So you got to practice deliberately uh, with some counsel along the way, getting feedback, using your gifts, and, and developing, not just practicing for the sake of practicing. Yeah, that's another reason why community is so important. Uh, one yeah. of the most terrifying but beneficial things for me was in some of my preaching classes yeah. in seminary, yep. is preaching in front of other classmates who are preachers yeah. and having them critique my yep. sermon that I just gave them. Yep. Um, it was scary, but the benefits I got from having them right. say, hey, I see this in you. I see you need to develop in this yep. way, maybe this. The community aspect of it was crucial in helping me develop at least that gift, and I'm nowhere near yeah, I mean, the point that I want to be with right. that. I don't think I don't think you would say no. that either. I no. don't think we ever get to yeah. Yeah. the perfect moment where this gift is fully developed and yeah. everything. I think it's just as sanctification is us yeah. becoming more and more Christ-like. Um, we will continue and continue to grow um, forever <laughs> yeah. in these giftings, right? Yeah, and I would say one of the places, one of our responsibilities in ministry is to help people in that process. Yeah. So um, earlier we were talking, you pointed out in first, I mean in Ephesians 4, um, you know, and he gave, speaking to, to the church, he gave, uh, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. So one of our roles is to help people use their gifts, which is part of the reason we're doing a podcast about spiritual yeah. gifts. But uh, we're we're helping people discover and equip and develop their gifts. So that's in, in community and in, in, in listening to leaders, whether it be discipleship group leaders or other leaders throughout our church, to, to, to be able to develop those gifts um, and then the next verse, Ephesians four thirteen, until we all attain unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. So that maturity is mm-hmm. growing over time as you're growing with your leaders and developing and equipping your gifts. Yeah. So kind of a, a curveball here, different thoughts yeah. with this. We're talking about spiritual gifts. And in the first episode, you mentioned these are gifts given yes. by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So how does the Holy Spirit play a role in us developing our spiritual gifts. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so uh, uh, Galatians 5 mentions the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, somebody pointed out, I think sun, that, that <laughs> Sunday I said fruits. So they, they singular. It is singular, and I know that. And I, I, I very well could have said fruits. 
Um, so the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So we, as we're growing in maturity, as we're growing in Christ-likeness, these are the kind of characteristics that, that the Holy Spirit is developing in us. And that's the fruit that flows from us. And so when we think about um, our gifting, um, it, it's, we, we have the aroma of Christ. We, we grow to smell like Christ, to taste like Christ, look like Christ. Um, we, uh, a, a, like in the Second Timothy passage, you know, it talks about we don't have a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. So yeah. that, that process, as we develop our gifts, it's growing. As the Holy Spirit's developing those gifts, He's also developing this fruit that comes from our life. Yeah. And so your leadership is a more loving leadership as it develops. Your yeah. leadership is more patience, more patient in your leadership. Or your mercy that started out to love people really well, man, as, it, as that develops, you become more and more uh, gentle and faithful, and you have got more control. So I think the Holy Spirit's role is He's shaping our character, He's shaping who we are, so that our gifts are more Christ-like yeah. as we use them. Yeah, as as He uh, pushes us towards holiness, yeah. He also pushes us in the development and honing yeah. of our spiritual gifts. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think when it comes to this, like we've connected these two so well, I think obedience plays a huge role. Like yeah. how do I develop my gifts? I think living in obedience to God's Word right. is crucial to that. While you might not see in Scripture a specific method of developing your spiritual gift of mercy, mm-hmm. one thing that is clear in Scripture is living in obedience to Christ. Right, right. And you said that earlier, uh, one, of the, one of the earlier episodes about... Um, you know, we we as we're talking about discovering this, you know, as as you go, um, that as as we follow Christ in obedience, many times that's where we find our gifts. And so, you know, uh, we said earlier that evangelism. Hey, that's not. Uh, you pointed out we can't use it as an excuse. Like, well, I, I'm not an evangelist. That's not my gifting. No, uh, we're all called to be evangelists, but. Nobody was a perfect evangelist the first time they tried to tell somebody else about Jesus. Yeah. Uh, we all can grow and develop in that. And so use your gifts, developing over time, letting the Spirit lead us and direct us. I think that's, that's how we develop. Yeah, that's um, good. And one of the things that I've, I came across, just a, a helpful phrase, um, you mentioned one of the other episodes, like, okay, being, being a wood, woodworking isn't a spiritual gift. I mean, you could use the gift of service as a woodworker to serve people. Right. Um, but the uh, kind of from that, that world, the idea of being a craftsman, you know, developing, developing a certain skill set and a certain um, ability to serve the church over time. You know, we use the illustration of, of Sarah's veterinary skills over decades. Like, okay, if, if the Lord chooses to give us decades and decades uh, to serve the church, um, let's, let's use it well. Let's, yeah. let's develop gifts well. Let's be really good at the things we're doing, not for the sake of patting ourselves on the back. It is for the glory of God. Um, and so let's don't, let's don't abuse the gifts or, or, or neglect the gifts. Yeah. Um, and I think part of that neg- not neglecting, part of that fanning into flame is doing everything we can to be the best we can given, given our gifts. Uh, nobody's gifts is fully developed on day one. So... Yeah, let's be a craftsman. That's good. And develop those gifts. That's really so, good. Yeah. Well, I, I thought about this last episode. I just kind of want to end with a, a practical question. Um, someone might have listened to this, and and they truly desire to serve specifically at our church to learn and develop these gifts. Yeah. What's that step? Who do they come talk to? How do they find a place to serve in our church? That's a good question. We need about four other children's teachers. So <laughs> I don't care what your gifts are. We're going to plug you into children's ministry. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. Um, I think a practical step, uh, come talk to an elder. Uh, me or Nathan are available, or any of the other elders are available. Um, and we, we've got, yeah, so many different ways. And, and like I, I mentioned about uh, being on the phone with somebody this week about um, women's ministry, you know, we may not have it figured out day one. Uh, yeah. We might not have it, but there are certain things that need to be filled, and we do have slots. But many times the way that conversation goes is, okay, here's your interest. I see that. Let's talk about that. Where might that fit? Maybe it's something that's already happening at the church that's that you could that you could just immediately plug in, or maybe it's not something that's happening. But 
we can help make it happen. Yeah. Um, and that's what I, I really love is that we're, we're not a church that, you know, it's going to have so much red tape where you got to fit in our certain molds. Right. Like, hey, you got an idea, you got a passion, let's help you do that well. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that it starts with a conversation with, with church leaders, and um, it may take time. We may not, you know, day one have that figured out, but I think, I think that's a really good point, Nathan, is yeah. let's be practical. Use your gifts, come talk to us about it, and we'd love to, love to plug you in. Yeah. Well, any last-minute thoughts before we uh, put a nice little bow on this spiritual gift series? Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll end with this uh, last reference out of First Peter chapter 4, uh, I quoted earlier, you know, he, he, um, he says, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. And in verse 11, he says, Whoever speaks is one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. But then here's what I want to finish with. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. So the whole point of us using our gifts is to glorify God through Jesus Christ. That's why we use our gifts. Not to not to boast our name individually, not to boast Infinity Church's name, but that the kingdom of God may be advanced as people see and savor Christ more through our gifts. That's the goal. That was a good little bow on this gift. See right <laughs> yeah, there? I like it. I like it. Thanks, All right. buddy. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us on the Equip Our Church podcast. We hope this has been encouraging to you, and we hope you will join us again next time.